you're looking at the 2021 Dodge Charger wide body scat pack and I'm gonna show you everything you need to know about this car. First of all, take a look at how absolutely menacing this car looks. The wide body, which we'll talk about in a second, gives it a serious mean appearance and you have a ton of room for cooling in this as well. You have a big grill set up right here, an additional little intake right here, which is not on the RT. You have two on the sides here and you have another big one right down here. This car also has this very cool carbon fiber looking stripe that runs down the entire car. Also in the front of this car, you get a nice scat pack badge, which is big enough to see from a distance. When I see the front ends of these cars, I see that, I know I'm probably not gonna race it. And you also have very, very mean looking headlights. The redesign that Dodge did in 2019 for chargers make these some of the best looking chargers I have ever seen. Now under this hood is where all of the good stuff is. You get a 6.4 liter V8 on each side of your engine bay you have powered by srt just to make it feel and look a lot more special which this engine is special you'll see in a second how hard it pulls it makes 485 horsepower and 475 pound feet of torque dodge claims you can do a zero to 60 run in just 4.3 seconds in this car let's test it But I don't want to just talk all good stuff about this engine. I want to give a real review. So first of all, yes, even though this car weighs 4,400 pounds, it can still move this boat. But these engines cannot handle modifications as well as you may think, especially when you compare it to rivals like the 5.0. And I made a separate video comparing the two cars. But this engine is not extremely reliable. The reliability rating tends to hover around 60 to 70, which makes sense. You know, you buy a sports car for fun purposes, not to have Toyota Corolla level of reliability. This one only has 24,000 miles on it. And I experienced a loud ticking noise, but it did go away. Take a listen to this. So yes, that was only a temporary ticking noise. As soon as I just revved it up a little bit, it stopped and I haven't heard it since. But for a 24,000 mile car, it's something to consider. And by the way, in the SXT model, which has the V6, you get 292 horsepower. The GT makes 300, the RT makes 370, Scat Pack makes 485, and Hellcats makes 717. Now on the side of this car, because this is a wide body, you get these massive fenders that seriously make this car look good. Wide bodies are a lot Lot more rare than narrow bodies and it's not just for the looks by the way the wide body gives you wider tires better handling and lets you have a lot more grip and a ton of more fun the question is is it really worth an extra eight thousand dollars from the narrow body competitor it depends on how much you use the car. If you're somebody that's like flooring it every time you're at a stop and you also really, really care about how your car looks and the rare factor, the wide body could be for you. So in the front here, you get 20 inch wheels, which are the exact same that come on the Dodge Charger RT and also the narrow body scat pack. But these tire widths are 305, which means you get a lot better handling and increased grip. As for brakes, this is a scat pack. So you get big four piston Brembo brakes in the front that have SRT written on them. And those really look good. I will say that this side profile of the car overall does not look that special. These brake calipers are a major factor as to what makes the side of this car look good. And not to mention this 392 Hemi badge. If this was an RT, you wouldn't have the 392, you just have the Hemi. This thing looks good. So now you can really see the whole side profile of this car. And yeah, other than the badge and the different colored Brembo brakes, there's not a whole lot on the side that makes you go, whoa, that's a special car. What is really nice though, is that this is a four door car. When you look at a Mustang, that's only two doors. And so this is not only a great fun car to drive, but also a good daily driver. Now in the rear of the car, this is where the wide body actually makes the big difference. Sure in the front it's appearance wise, but in the back, because this is a wide body, instead of 275s, you get 305s for your tire width. And that makes a big difference with grip. And you also get four piston Brembo brakes that also have SRT written on them right on your rear wheels. And speaking of which, how good do they actually perform? Let's do a hard brake test from 60 miles an hour and see what it gets. Hard brake test, three, two, one, go. 
that's pretty good. And there is something about the back ends of these cars that look so, so good to me. I was never a huge muscle stripe racing stripe fan, but this one on this gray color, I think looks phenomenal. It just completes the design for me. Nothing really different about the wide body back here. You do get a scat pack badge, of course, because this is a scat pack. You have a dual tip exhaust system, which sounds really, really good with this 6.4 liter V8. Take a listen. The spoiler back here is actually the exact same one that's on the Dodge Charger RT. I wish it was different, but th these wings do seriously complete the design of the back ends of these cars. You also have two vents in the back to help more airflow through the wheel well. And I've also always loved how the taillights on these Dodges look. And by the way, the trunk button, no one can ever, ever find it if they don't know this car. It's a little black button right next to your E on Dodge that you click and it opens automatically for you. Now that we're inside of this car, let's take a look at everything that you get, and this will surprise you. Right when you open up the door on this car, this door panel looks a lot more better, special, and feels a lot more high quality than the Dodge Charger RT I reviewed, and look at the color combination inside of this car. These Alcantara seats are so satisfying to the touch and look so good. You also get the Scat Pack badge and a different colored headrest with this consistent red stitching that runs throughout the car. And when you take a seat in here, these seats are so comfortable to ride in. Like I said, this car weighs 4,400 pounds, and despite the fact that you get a 485 horsepower V8, it's supposed to be a performance car, but it also can be a very comfortable daily driver if you want it to. Now, when you're ready to drive this thing and you press the push to start button, you get 392 scat pack that appears right on your speedometer, an RPM gauge that will rev up to just over 6,000 RPM, which is a noticeable difference from the RT. Something about the RT, it did not rev up high enough to my liking, but this one does. And also, this steering wheel is massive. It takes up over half the space between the dash of the car and the seat where your legs are. And this is a very simple steering wheel. It feels good to hold. There's not a whole bunch of buttons, but it's got everything you need. And also, there's paddle shifters in the back, which are set up in a very cool way. If you hold down the downshift one, it'll automatically shift to the lowest gear possible so you can floor it. Now in the center console, you have your stick to switch from park, reverse, neutral, drive. You can also shift it to the left and shift manually. You also have two cup holders that you can cover up with this cover here, which does look nice. And you have a massive, massive storage space in your center console with two USB ports as well. And by the way, that little rubber compartment you see next to the gear lever is where people steal your car. Your neutral strap is hidden under that. And the reason that exists is because Dodge set these cars up in a way where no matter what your credit score is or what your down payment is, they will try to get you into this car. Now they know most of the people who buy these are gonna have them repossessed. So they needed to set up an easy way to repossess these cars and that led to this car being the most stolen car in the world. But to jump to a more positive note, other than how great this interior presentation looks, my favorite thing is the infotainment systems you get in these cars. And this one has some special ones. This is not just the regular RT infotainment system. This one has quite a few more options. So first of all, to touch on some basics, you get driver and passenger heated and ventilated seats with two different modes. You also get a heated steering wheel in here. These features almost make this car cross over into the luxury territory. Really, with this interior and these kinds of amenities, this is more than what you need. Now, in this infotainment system, if you're on the app screen, you see a button called SRT mode and SRT dashboard. If you click SRT mode, you're able to individually configure all of your drive modes, or you can just select the pre-configured modes, which are track and sport. Of course, there's no street mode because you know you're gonna be flooring this car every second. Now, if you click track setup, when you switch to track mode, you can configure your transmission, paddle shifters, traction, suspension, and steering. But then you see another button next to track setup called race options. Click this and you have line lock, 
launch control, and you can configure shift lights just to make it so that when you hit the red line, this car will give you a flash. And if you don't know what line lock is, in simple terms, that means this car was built for burnouts. And then when you select launch control, you can launch this thing up to 3,300 RPM, whereas the RT will only go up to 3,000. And the 3,300 RPM launch in this car is aggressive. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Now if you jump back to the apps page and click SRT dashboard, you get taken back to the same place that we were last time. That button's really just a shortcut to get to where you need to go to have fun quickly. But on the bottom of this infotainment system, on the right hand side, you see a performance button. Let's click it. Once that thing loads, you get taken to the home page of your performance pages. And here, well, you can select what you wanna see live readings on with your car while you drive it. But it gets a lot better. If you click timers, you're able to see performance metrics like your reaction time, your 60 feet, 330 feet. And right next to your drag button, if you click acceleration and braking, you can see your zero to 60, zero to 100 and brake timers with the best zero to 60 being one second. Now, obviously that's somebody who just did a zero to 60 test, but spun the tires up to 60. Of course, that's not possible. Now under the timers button, you have a gauges button. If you click that, you're able to see some important temperature metrics for your car. And under gauges is G-force, where you can see your live G-force reading in your car and also the peak that this has ever hit. That makes me really, really want to try to beat that record. And under G-forces, you see an engine button. If you click that, you get a circular graph to show you your live horsepower and torque reading. This view of the performance metrics is probably one of my favorite. Or maybe it's the next one, which is your dyno graph. This thing will record 120 seconds of history for what your RPM usage has been, as well as your horsepower usage. And by the way, right above your center console, you see drive modes and launch. If you don't want to go into your infotainment system and you just want instant access to those things, you can simply click those buttons and go right away. Now, if you're curious about the back seats of these cars, they are very comfortable and spacious. I have zero complaints about that, but this one has heated seats in the back. That is what I mean by this car is borderline passing in to the luxury territory. A lot of luxury cars don't even have heated seats in the back. And back there, you also have climate control and also some cup holders, as well as that absolutely beautiful Alcantara seat design. These are some, genuinely some of the coolest seats I've ever seen. So what do you think about this car? Is this something you would buy? And if so, what is your max limit that you would spend on something like this? For me, I think $50,000 is a reasonable price, but to ask for 65 for a wide body, that's a little bit much for me. It feels like not that long ago, Hellcats cost that much. If you enjoyed this review, make sure you drop a like and subscribe to this channel to help it out. And if you want to see more reviews, let me know what cars you want to see next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.